welcome back to another episode of Theorycraft. I'm Jack, and over in that little rectangle is Ben. And welcome back to another episode of an Irishman who discovered the secrets of life itself, drank a load of Guinness, and then forgot where the fuck he put it. But anyway, this is going to be on a subject which uh, we've been talking about greatly for hours on end, and it's been pretty much non-stop with like, the theories which we come up with, hence the name Theorycraft. So, otherwise, what would we call ourselves? But anyway, it's about Spider-Man No Way Home. Obviously, we are buzzed, very excited, because we got all kinds of Marvel uh, content which is coming out and over the next few years as well. But we're going to speculate on, this is just going to be our theories and speculation to do with the film, you know, plot-wise and villains, what we think is going to happen. And obviously we'll probably talk about the leaks and everything which have been coming out and supposed deep fakes, all that. But anyway, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. So without further ado, let's just get rocking and rolling with no time to waste. So obviously with Spider-Man No Way Home, it is pretty much a done deal that we're going to get all three Spider-Man. So it's going to be the whole multiversal uh, thing. So we're going to have, without a doubt, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire, which is uh, probably our... Spider-Man from our childhoods, uh, whereas you guys probably had maybe Andrew or Tom. But obviously there's a great deal of speculation for what we've seen from the trailer already. We've had already seen, uh, well, we've seen Sandman, Doc, Dr. Octavius, Doc Cock, and the Green Goblin with the pumpkin bomb. But there is so much to get through with this really, like this film has already smashed like the records for the trailer, which it beat. Uh, the trailer for Endgame, which is just within about 24 hours, just smashed records. But there's a great deal of speculation with this, whether it's going to be a Sinister Six plot, which I really reckon it could be. But without further ado, we've already had Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Sandman, Electro. So let's speculate on the rest of the villains, which could probably pop up. But do you think that it could be some kind of... I really reckon it could be some kind of Sinister Six uh, storyline. What do you think, man? To a degree, yes. I mean, it's quite obvious that there's going to be some concept of the Sinister Six to a degree. It's just whether or not it's going to have all of them be the bad guy from the beginning and then half of them turncoat because, obviously, Doc Ock and Sandman are the only two baddies within the Spidey franchise that actually realised that they were doing something wrong and turncoated towards the end of their movies. Yes. I mean, so far, the only baddie that hasn't died, unless we're proven wrong, is the Vulture. Yes. Because Green Goblin died, both of them did, even though I don't count Harry as Green Goblin, but that's another thing in itself. <laughs> You also have the lackluster version of Venom, which I'm glad got redone which by Which we do Tom... not talk about here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it was redone by Tom Hardy as a separate film in its own right. But then it's one of these things where what part could the Vulture play if he's going to be part of this Sinister Six? Because he's not the same version of the Vulture that is in the comics. He's more of a tech guy. But then that's pretty much what Green Goblin and Doc Ock do. Well, mind you, I don't really see... Obviously, there's a great deal of speculation where I reckon it's got to be... If it is a Sinister Six storyline, let's just say that it is for the purpose of this discussion for now. My re I think Vulture is very unlikely because I don't really see him serving a great deal of plot. But... The ones which we have, ones which we have seen, is Rhino as well from Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, which I freaking hate. That Rhino, the mech suit, and all was just—it's rubbish. Man, there's people speculating that it could be Andrew's uh, lizard, quite possibly, because there's a small section in the trailer which happens for about a second or so in one of the portals where they see a big sort of creature. And some people speculating it could be Venom. Some people speculating it could be lizard. Like, but how likely I? Is the lizard? I'm not sure. Well, a lot of people have speculated it could be Scorpion, which is a possibility. <laughs> but then the whole concept of Scorpion is a very confusing one regardless, because there's been other people that have played the role. But I only mention Vulture because 
the one thing I've learned when it comes to making theories about movies of the MCU or anything that's a big franchise is you look at the toy merch first before you speculate anything else. And this is why I wanted to demonstrate Vulture, because if you can bear with me, this is one of the Lego sets for No Way Home. Now, why would they add in Vulture if he wasn't going to be part of it? Like, just just give it away, will you? Just give it away. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there has been times where the Lego sets have been incorrect because it's just a way of, well, duping the fans. That's pretty much what it's there for. Well, mind but, you, this, yeah. But the thing is, it's it'd be okay if it was like a side character that didn't really matter much, say... I don't know, one of Peter Parker's friends, like uh, Ned or MJ. Like It wouldn't matter so much. But the fact that Vulture's already been the main baddie for one film prior kind of gives away the game that he's going to be in it to some degree. Yes, I yeah, I would like, to some extent agree with that. But mind you, like trailers are pretty much, the trailers are meant to be uh, pretty deceiving as it is because you know like shots can be like some of the shots that we've seen may not even be complete there may be something missing deliberately you know to throw us off because usually what we see in the trailer we see the film and it could be completely different or the shots could be completely different like um there was one instance which i really wanted to uh, bring up just very quickly which you actually mentioned to me which was um uh, the scene where you see Doc Ock and the arms and everything, and he says, hello, Peter, and he looks like he's saying it to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. But after what you told me, I think he would be saying that to Tobey Maguire, to mm -hmm. his version of Spider-Man, which seems very likely because you said something about like the shot being too far away from Tom. Yeah. So, yeah, so the theory going that I've picked up from someone else who I cannot remember they basically said that the establishing shot transitioning from Doc Ock to uh, Tom's Spidey, Tom's Spidey is quite far out. Now, yeah. normally, when it comes to the main protagonist for a film, they keep it as close as possible because it's the focus on them. Why would they have a wide, very wide shot of the main actor to the entire film in a very random setting if they weren't br bigging up the whole point that it's Toby Maguire. And because when we see like the pumpkin bomb beforehand that I managed to put I feel like I've put two and two together but obviously until I see the film I can't be sure but when like the pumpkin bomb obviously explodes and so on we see Tom Holland on top of the car I think he's looking up when he's looking up at the sky I think he's looking up at Toby Maguire's Green Goblin. Possibly. I mean there is some speculation that Ned Leeds which is technically the Hobgoblin in the Marvel comics mm. might actually become his actual counterpart in the movie because the actor himself has gone on a drastic weight change recently. He's got a lot more toned and he's lost a hell of a lot of weight. You wouldn't do that unless there is a reasoning behind the role because the guy is basically an amalgamation of two characters. You've got Ned Lees, which is what Hobgoblin is, but then the actor himself looks very similar to a character that Miles Morales, Ultimate Spidey, has a friend by the name of Gonk, I believe is how it's pronounced, but I could be wrong. But he is basically a very beloved, cheery, heavyset Asian guy. But Ned Leeds in the comics is a cock Asian guy that basically tries to mimic the Green Goblin and becomes Hobgoblin instead. But it could be either future version of Ned Leeds, because this the whole thing is like the multiverse, the whole reality is like, disrupt, like that's the whole general gist of this movie I'm either thinking it's multiversal version or a future version of Ned because one of the two makes more sense than it just being oh yeah, I just lost a load of weight for no apparent reason yeah, yeah, for sure but the <sighs> thing is there is so many things that we wanted to cover about this entire thing. The funniest thing of all that we've laughed about for the past week is the fact that uh, uh, Andrew Garfield keeps going, oh, it's not me, it's not me, that's Spidey in that Andrew, shot. It's all we deep. all know. We but all know. <laughs> apparently it's deep fake because there is the app Deep Fake where you can literally 
take Tom's face and crop it over to somebody else's. Although there's a lot to say otherwise, though. Well, the thing is, the app can only do so much, and it's just a bit convenient that it's the same hairstyle, the same suit that he wore as Amazing Spidey. And granted, he doesn't look much older, but to be fair, it was what? How long ago was Amazing Spider-Man? Oh, was it 2012? Was it? I think so. So it's about nine years, which sounds a long time. But considering the fact that he, well, he was in his like 20s in the first place and he was very baby faced doing that. It, For the mo most part, when it comes to any man that has a beard or whatever, as soon as it's gone, you look like a goddamn child. Let's face yeah. it. So the fact that he looks so similar to his Amazing Spidey version anyway, why would there be anyone to fake it? Like, what would be the point? Well, the guy who was um, exposed by another guy on uh, TikTok, um, basically, like, basically the way he put, like, the way he put it was just, there's no way he is deep fake. There's no way he's deep fake this. And you know, the whole video, I will try and link it in the description somewhere, but it basically says otherwise that it's not a deep fake, which I don't think it is a deep fake. Um, but then there's also one particular image which is floating about, supposedly, which it does look like, even though it's very grainy, of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield together in the scene. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how it's all go gonna come about. Like, obviously they're all meeting one another, but from what I can gather, obviously you got Tom Holland meets Tobey Maguire's Spidey first, and then they meet Andrew Garfield's. But I'm just curious as to which one of them two has retired the role because they both suffered a lot of tragedy within their story arc. Well, Although... I, I think it just depends from which... <sighs> because this is the difficult bit. You know, which like point in their timeline are they coming from? Because obviously we got Doc Ock back, which I'm assuming uh, that's the evil Doc Ock before he obviously redeemed himself, destroyed the machine and so on. But the pro the thing is, like, when you see Doc Ock in the trailer, there's a specific detail which was pointed out to me in a video, which I didn't notice. And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. But when the lights in the arms in the middle of... Um, in the middle of like the hand claw whatever you want to call it is red which mm -hmm. means basically the tentacles are controlling themselves but when they're white it's under doc ox control when they're red so i was just like oh okay that's a little detail i didn't notice mm -hmm. so it so it makes you think at what point is green goblin like plucked back at which point is doc ox plucked back and the same goes for andrew and toby as well which is a bit of a it screws with your brain a little bit i don't really know well, the thing is, as well, is obviously Doc Ock looks so drastically different because he's actually wearing a shirt. Because I said to you about the fact that during his stint in Tobey Maguire's movie, he doesn't have a shirt on. No. But in the trailer, he's wearing a trench coat and he's got a shirt over the top of the tentacles. So whether or not it's like it's the same guy or whether it's a variant of it's one of these things that's really bugging me with marvel at the moment because they are heavily hinting within the what if series as well as loki about the whole concept of variants yeah this is the problem <laughs> which for those of you who do not know what it means it basically means a very a different version of the same person in a different reality that may or may not be the same origin if that makes sense so yes. essentially you could have billions of billions of billions of timelines and then you'd follow the same person and then all of a sudden whoop, it goes off a bit that's yeah. the variant to a degree yeah so it's like a uh it's like what i discussed on my other channel with like the uh the multiple earth theory mm -hmm. but with that in mind if doc has got a change i wonder whether or not green goblin would be changed because if you remember we were discussing the other day about how they did attempt originally in the sam raimi movies to make him look more comic book like where it was more 
latex than it was yeah, an armored was, suit. That was the first prototype mask which they had, but then I think they scrapped it like a month before they started filming and did the uh, sort of mech suit goblin. But this is why I'm wondering whether we're going to have a more realistic version of the Green Goblin with the whole purple tunic and the sort of less like less armored version and more of a well just green goblin that he is in the comics yeah well mind you like the mech suit goblin i actually really like i like that goblin personally um you don't see many people cosplaying by the way as that but um there was another thing which was from that clip of andrew garfield which it, for me it's definitely a real clip and then i remember when it first came out and everybody's speculating about what is he saying what is he saying and to correspond with that picture, supposedly of him and Tobey Maguire, and people were trying to guess what he was saying to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And I think what everybody seems to agree on is because Tobey Maguire is the only Spider-Man who's got organic webbing, who doesn't have web shooters. Although uh, originally in pre-production of the original Spider-Man, he was meant to have web shooters. And mm -hmm. even in the original trailers, he has web shooters, but then they abandoned that idea. But so... I think the general gist of what people agree on is that he's asking Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, like, so you have web, web blood, because obviously he's the only one with organic webs. Mm -hmm. Which I really, I'm kind of intrigued as to which one of the two non-organic Spideys are going to flip out more. I got this feeling that it's going to be like Tom Holland's Spidey is going to be a bit more bleh about it because it's like it's he's more kid like so he's going to be a bit more grossed out than say Andrew Garfield but I I don't know if it's going to be one of those things where they just like have it as a joke for two minutes and carry on or whether it's going to be some sort of useful plot towards the end of the movie and he ends up dying I know it sounds horrible but Tobey Maguire was the first Spider-Man I have this feeling he's going to be one that dies well, to be honest, it's just even if that is so, I I don't know how you're going to justify that unless it's maybe sort of a passing of the torch moment for like Tom Holland, even though that was already done. So I I struggle to see the justification for killing off Tobey Maguire. True, but then don't forget it's obviously it's the MCU. They're trying to. There's so many things they're trying to do at the moment, and one of the other many things they're trying to establish is the Young Avengers. So whether or not Spider-Man's going to become one of that, who knows? But my point being is that they're heavily focusing on the idea of heroes being the younger generation. It would only make sense that either Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is sacrificed in some way, or perhaps just stops being spidey by the end of the movie yeah well for me it just for him to like retire as spider-man for me it makes a bit more sense and obviously because he's the he's the older of all three actors so mm -hmm. i suppose for him retiring the role and like his arc and everything i just suppose for him to retire in like those films it would it would make a great deal of sense i feel like you know especially because sam raimi is um Sam Raimi's directing the new uh, Doctor Strange, isn't he? I believe so, yes. He is directing Multiverse of Madness. Mm. So, you know, that does make me think. Because, like, Sam Raimi, you know, he couldn't give Spider-Man the... Because they were going to do Spider-Man 4 to sort of correct, you know, the travesty that was Spider-Man 3, but then they basically said, no, we don't want that film, and then they re rebooted it. So I suppose, in a way, it'd be a really nice way to sort of tie up that bow on mm. um, Tobey Maguire, which I think would be a really nice end. But um, it just kind of leaves, you know, where do they go? It's just with the multiversal thing when we when we were speculating, everybody, about um, whether it would be Tom Holland, Spider-Man, cycling through all the different realities, that maybe the realities are mixed up in some way, or whether everything's just bled into one. You know, there's so many specu speculation and theories when it comes to that especially when it comes to <laughs> there's so much to freaking get through jesus christ <laughs> but um even there's so many other things like there's that one shot in the trailer where you see dr strange you know on top of the train and with top with uh, tom holland and like you see the trains like in the spin and everything like that and lots of people have been speculating and they've been going 
is that the same train that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man stopped, you know, against Doc Ock? You know, that that might be the same train. And I was like, mm, okay. It, I'm finding it really interesting to see how it's all going to bleed together. I think... I think the way it's going to work is... It's going to be one of these things that even though... The, like, there's so many random concepts that people have come up with, like in the trailer where you got Doctor Strange saying, don't mess with the spell. At first, a lot of us thought that it was just down to Tom Holland's Spidey being indecisive mm -hmm. of what he wants. But then some people are speculating whether or not it's because he's not talking to him, but he's actually trying to communicate with Wanda, who's basically at the end of WandaVision, messing about with the... Uh, Oh, forget, the dark hole that's what i was trying to remember basically because now she's the scarlet witch she is basically the living version of a reality stone if not more powerful to yeah. be able to just shake reality to what she wants yeah 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 but if that's the case i'm just trying to figure out as to how much more of a ripple effect it's going to have if she's the one behind it because she is going to be part of doctor strange too but People have speculated that she may not be as a good guy, but more of a bad guy. And people are also speculating that the Doctor Strange we see isn't actually Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. They obviously because of like if you've been watching What If. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so I have Disney Plus, and I've let Jack watch What If, and safe to say, I think he's hooked. Yeah, I mean, just after I saw that Doctor Strange, I just went, "Yes, okay, this changes things." Yes. But it's one of these things where I got a funny feeling that partly the whole reason why Doctor Strange does this spell, it's not because Spidey and him fought together against Thanos and everyone else. It's partly down to him being egotistical because he's a very cocky person, but partly because he might want to try and teach Spidey in some bizarre logic, like how to take responsibility of what's happened because yeah. the great mantra of spider-man is with great power has great responsibility so it would make some reasonable sense that maybe dr strange accidentally breaks reality to find the other spider-man to teach tom holland spidey the responsibility of being spider-man because so far yes he's lost uncle ben but we've not seen that He's lost Iron Man, and he's fought against various other villains, but he's still very, very novice compared to Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, who did more in one movie. Yeah, well, I really like Tom Holland. Is you know the way he's portrayed is obviously very like heroic, and like obviously we've seen him grow throughout the films, but he still is very naive from what yes. we see in the trailer. Extremely naive, and not realizing the repercussions of what he's actually asking because um it does sort of lend itself to a comic i think it's called spider-man one more day i think that yes. was the issue with the comic where uh the same kind of thing happens and basically i think instead of going to dot strange i think spider-man goes to mephisto instead yes. and says like can everybody forget my identity and so on and he says okay i will do that but Basically, your marriage to Mary Jane never happened. Yeah. You know? And so it could, you know, it's going to be a massive ripple effect. But there was one other thing which was in the trailer, which I found really interesting. And it's all to do with a white suit shirt, which obviously Spider-Man is going to be on trial. You see the lights outside of his home, which I'm assuming is the police. It looks like police, uh, the police lights. And um, obviously we see like the him in, like being interrogated or whatever. But in this situation, and because of like the circumstances, who's the best person to defend him? Matt Murdock. Exactly. <laughs> well, this is why I'm hoping he has more than just a bare minimum role, because Daredevil has had such a bad rap when it comes to live action. We've had Ben Affleck. I oh, mean, that, that says it all. But Charlie Cox did a really great job but Netflix just screwed him over. Oh, yeah. It was a brilliant Daredevil, but I just feel sorry for like the crap they put him through. But the thing is, 
it was round about like the early days of the MCU that they wanted to expand the universe, but they were too scared of like mucking up continuity. So they didn't want to say it was part of the MCU, but they were hinting that it was, but it wasn't, but it was what it wasn't. Like the only ones <sighs> Char Charlie Cox's Daredevil was perfect. Wasn't a huge fan of Jessica Jones, primarily for the fact that Jessica Jones actually has a big link towards Spider-Man, which really fudges up the whole timeline of the MCU, but that's just my preference. Luke Cage, perfectly done. It makes a lot of sense. He, it's just a great series for African-Americans who want more representation, which is fair enough. And then there's Iron Fist, which... I have no idea what the fudge they were trying to do with that. But the thing is, I got one of two theories when it comes to Daredevil. Either he is primarily going to be in it as just an Easter egg, so he's basically there for the court date and that's the end of it. Or he could be pretending to be Spider-Man because he has done it in the comics where he has taken the mantle of Spider-Man and basically pretended to be Spidey to get him off the case. Because I think in the cartoon series, the 90s one that we both grew up with, they have the same problem, don't they? Where Spider-Man basically goes to court, Daredevil becomes his lawyer, they find out who's one another, blah blah blah, blah and basically Daredevil becomes Spider-Man yeah. to disprove the whole point. Which would be brilliant, but there is one slight drawback to the fact that obviously he doesn't have Spider-Man's powers, he just has really good reflexes. Which it does make me think that the uh, we I was trying to think of scenarios to which how you know Doctor Strange or the other Spider Man could get Tom Holland you know uh, you know so basically he can be disproven as no I'm not Spider Man and the only other way I can think of them doing it is for in Tom Holland's reality for in Tom Holland's reality for one of the other Spider Men so either Toby or Andrew to basically put on uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man suit basically pretend to be him so disproving because you know, obviously the people at large in that reality won't know that that is that reality's Peter Parker who'd just be some random dude in a Spider-Man suit and so there we go okay that well it can't be you know Peter Parker because this is a completely different person so it can't so it can't be him but then it makes me think uh, is either Tom or Andrew going to take the rap for being Spider-Man and then they go back to their reality and thus Tom is pretty much safe. I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to do it that way, but I'm wondering whether there is going to be more implications with it because Andrew Garfield's reality, as far as we know, is not the greatest one because he basically lost Gwen Stacy, the love of his life. For all we know... He could basically want to stay in the MCU because there's nothing left for him in his reality to stay in for. So you could end up with two Spider-Men. So one of them could become normal Spidey and the other could be Scarlet Spidey. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the Ben Riley Spider-Man. Yes. Like, obviously, I don't think we'd ever get the clone saga conspiracy thing within the mcu it'd be amazing if we oh, did that's my favorite spider-man episode from the 90s it was brilliant it's a great story and it's still quite effective to this day when it comes to the comics but it's one of those things where you'd have to establish so much before you even get halfway through the movie i mean it would be quite interesting if by the end of it we did have the Jackal as a bad guy for a future movie because that's the only bad guy we've not technically seen live action yet. Although, we're, because obviously we're getting the multiverse madness and so on, obviously the multiverse, you know, bleeding into all the other films and series, it does make me think we might, I hope we do, get an appearance from the Beyonder or maybe introduce Madam Webb. See, I would love to see Madam Web because it made Spider-Man more than just a guy that got bitten by a radioactive spider. Like There was the whole web of reality, which I got this feeling that they're going to hint towards with Doctor Strange because he is the mystic guy. But I don't know how much of the movie is going to like stay on that premise. Because if anything, it would make more sense if the, 
he was the reason why reality broke because he was trying to leave the web of reality like because the whole point of spider-man is that he is a spider totem it's this weird mystic thing within marvel and there's basically there's one spider totem within each reality so then it's like a cosmic thing it has to happen so with that in mind the like, it would be the perfect way to segue into the fact that there is more to spider-man than just being bitten by a spider and it would explain to degree my next point which is why he has a new suit which is black and gold which i believe is a mystic suit either conjured by dr strange or somebody else yeah well i yeah well i think it's definitely got to be a suit maybe made by dr strange it's just i was trying to think of okay so he's got this suit but um even though it's yeah there's probably the best representation we could possibly get uh because it's not very clear in the trailer but i just think you know and you see even in the merchandise in the t in even in the toys where it's got sort of like this cosmic webbing of sorts i think it's let's have a look so we got some more images here of the suit where it's there we go. So it's sort of like a noir version there. And then, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention J. Jonah Jameson, action doll, as you always wanted. Oh, yeah, of course. Just he's got less hair. Well, yes, but there we go. But there we go. So with the Doctor Strange one, obviously, you've got the mystic constructs. And then I believe we got a random web shooter, web shooter, web shooter. Where is it? Here we go. So that's one of the weird things is that Spider-Man has in this toy the same type of yellow coming out of his suit. So it looks like a mystic construct. Why? Spider-Man doesn't know. I don't know. I I, have, I I can't think of any justification for it. Well, the thing is, I think in one of the future what if episodes, it's Spider-Man becomes the sorcerer supreme. So whether or not they're trying to hint towards the idea that he learned some mystic arts from Doctor Strange within this movie, which would be brilliant, but to what end? Oh, this yes. is a problem. <laughs> I know, I know. Like, don't get me wrong, it'd be amazing to see Spider-Man. Like, the only way I could imagine it is like you could see because the way that Doctor Strange does his like spells is like you can see it draw out bit by bit. I would imagine the way that Spidey does it is it looks like a web in a way and then it like constructs into what he needs. Yeah. Which would be beautiful to watch but that the only reason I can imagine that's going to happen is because either his suit fails on him because it's all tech or he runs out of web shooters. Yeah. But then this is spider-man like he's able to use his ingenuity at the best of times so again it begs the question as to why well there's another thing as well like because we got three like three spider-man we got andrew toby and tom but the thing which has been bugging the living hell out of me which i've not got an answer for yet is if they are meant to be Spider obviously if they're meant to be Spider-Man, so on when you go obviously, you know, when in reality some people speculate that there's the multiple earth theory, that there's many different variants depending on decisions such that we make. That you know, there's a version of like there could be a version of me who decided to um go to the gym at seven o'clock at night, uh, or going to the gym at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, and that creates like a different timeline for every decision, sort of like a butterfly effect in a way. But it does make me wonder, if they are sort of the same but not the same, why do they look different? How are they different? Why do they have different... Because if they might... Because obviously we've seen in... I can't remember which film it was. It was Andrew Garfield. I think it was Amazing Spider-Man 2, where we see Doc Ock's arms in Oscorp. And obviously they have Doc Ock in, um, in Tobey Maguire's one. Mm -hmm. But it just makes me think, why... I know they're the same, but why do they look different? They should look the same. Like I, I know this is just may seem like a little thing, but it's really bugging me. Well, the thing is with the multiverse is obviously that it takes like minor little things to snowball into something else. So 
you could argue that within Andrew Garfield's reality, technology is slightly more advanced than, say, compared to Tobey Maguire's. And then the same can be said for Tom Holland's compared to Toby, uh, to Andrew Garfield's. Because obviously, it, and they haven't confirmed it in either of the past two, that there is anyone else but Spider-Man in that reality. Yeah. Because obviously the fact that in the 90s, Spider-Man was owned by Sony, blah, 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 blah. But for the MCU, there is obviously Stark Industries. There's God knows how many other tech companies, which would argue why the technology is better because there's more tech companies around compared to their realities that may or may not have a Stark. Yeah, true. Because if you remember in the Andrew Garfield's reality, all of that tech is part of the Oscorp Corporation. But in the Tobey Maguire's reality, it's all their own stuff that they've made on their own. Because Green Goblin stuff is obviously Oscorp stuff, doesn't matter. But with Doc Ock, it's his own stuff that he's made. While it was funded by the Oscorp, it isn't primarily theirs. It was through funding. Yeah. And, I mean, again, it's like with... Um, i trying to think, what else? What other baddies did we have? Well, with there was another... But in which there's been speculation on this, but I've not seen many people talk about it, but we're going to talk about it. But there's a possibility that because obviously we've seen What If and Doctor Strange, and obviously with what's happening with like the spell going wrong and everything as we've seen the trailer and so on and so forth, multiverse, blah, 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 that there is a possibility, and it's a bit of a stretch, but it's not out of the realms of possibility, that Doctor Strange is Mysterio. That he never died. Yeah, I mean, thing is, I've said to Jack that it was far too convenient that Mysterio died. Yes. Because it's weird that if you think about it, the only baddie that's technically died from the first film of the franchise of the hero is Ironmonger. Because I cannot think of any other baddie within. I mean, Killmonger kind of... Killmonger and Black Panther did die, but he died at the top of the mountain with the good guy. Uh, other than that, obviously Vulture survived in the first movie of Spider-Man. There is... There is nobody else that has technically died that's a baddie within the MCU that I can think of. No. Thanos died twice, but that's just a head fudge, and it's... Yeah. But it just seems too convenient that the guy that's able to manipulate drones into creating very realistic holograms died. Like, and, sorry, to, uh, Tom Holland Spidey didn't do anything to make him die. All he no. did was grab the gun, and that was it. He punched him, but he didn't punch him hard enough to die. No. And again, it's one of these things where it's where you got one of the many guys that worked with Mysterio uploads the video at the end of it, which is how he gets his identity revealed in the first place. Which is, that's what makes me think that Mysterio might still be alive. Well, this is where my theory comes in, that... The Mysterio that obviously Spidey thought he was fighting, and then the guy that uploads the video could be the other way around. Yeah. Because obviously he was a nobody. He was an ex Stark employee that couldn't make a box of scraps in a cave. Uh, <laughs> but they could have swapped because obviously he's got the tech to make himself look like anyone. For all we know, it could have been that the guy with the specs basically pretends to be Mysterio, Mysterio pretends to be the guy with the specs to upload the video and run away. Yeah. But it makes me wonder as to how Mysterio is going to get caught if he does get caught at all. It does make you think. It does make you think. I mean, nothing's out of the realms of possibility at the minute. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a really clever way they did Mysterio, I just hated the fact that it took a team of 20 people to do no, it. No, Mysterio is a, lone, is a lone ranger. He's a lone man. Well, 
not even that, okay? Like, given the fact that this is all tech that Tony Stark invented, the drones, everything, whatever, how come he couldn't make them smaller but could make an arc reactor the size of my living room fit into his chest? <sighs> But again, it, in this, just leave Stark dead. Just leave Tony dead. He's gone, all right? Get over it. <laughs> yes. But I definitely think it's going to be a movie that's going to change a hell of a lot within the rest of the MCU. There's a lot more to come. But it's whether or not we're going to have all the Spideys have their happy ending or whether there's going to be consequences for some of them. I know. I think there's going to be consequences. I really think there will be consequences. Like there's, you know, speculation that there's been speculation that because um, we we never saw Mary Jane in Andrews Spider Man, did we? She she's in a deleted scene, but it's one of those things where it's more of an Easter egg than it was anything else. Which it does make me think. Now, what if now it could be a possibility that what if uh, Tom Holland's Mary Jane actually dies, which a lot of people are speculating, since it is pretty much Tom Holland's film, in a way. I got a feeling... I don't think she'll die, but I think it would be one of these things where... Because she's not Mary Jane, but she's MJ. Like That's the difference, because at the time, they couldn't legally call her Mary Jane. But... It's going to be one of these things where she's going to have to leave him because she's realised how dangerous it is to be with him. And then it could be some bizarre thing towards the end of the movie that you get this girl with red hair that goes, hey there, tiger. And then that's it. You don't see her, but you see the back of her head. That's red hair. And that's it. Like It leads into, if there is going to be more Spidey films, the real MJ. Well... There's another thing which is in the trailer as well, which I've not been able to identify, is the voice that's just before we see Doc Ogg. And it says, be careful what you wish for, Parker. Like, who does that sound like to you? A lot of people are saying it's Doctor Strange, but it doesn't sound like Doctor Strange to me. See, a lot of people say it's strange, but I, I'm not sure because I don't see why he would be so ominous. It doesn't sound like Doctor Strange to me. And I've been racking my brain trying to think, who sounds like that? Who sounds like that voice? And I've not been able to find anything yet. The only thing that would be a hell of a like, random twist is if it was Harry Osborn. That's what I was about to say. Because, I mean, Andrew Garfield's Harry Osborn was just terrible. Like, Oh, God, he was pretty much a crack addict. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's what he looked like. He looked like a crack addict that got attacked by Flubber. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, you see that that goblin, oh my god, it's bloody awful. Like, I, you know, if you ask me, like, which one do I prefer? Do I prefer Tobey Maguire's, like, version 2 Green Goblin as Harry? Or do I prefer The Amazing Spider-Man Harry? I don't like either of them. Well, I mean, James Franco did the best he could. He looks like a really, like, edgy snowboarder when he's Green Goblin. I don't know why, but it's just the big thick goggles that just and the big mask. If yeah, anything... Like, yeah, because like in the... Because um, obviously in Spider-Man 3, like it was only Sandman that... Sandman was meant to be the main villain. There wasn't going to be anybody else. But then Avi Arad, who's been involved with pretty much all the Spider-Man films and he pretty much cocked up most of them. Um even though he's meant to be like a proper Marvel executive, but he copped that right up uh, because he was just like, I'll tell you what, what's better than just one villain? Loads of villains! <laughs> but obviously, and then we got that horrible version of Venom, which I would very much like to forget because Tom Hardy is Venom. And so it does make me think, you know, we've speculated quite a lot, but then... Is there going to be other things? What's out of the realm of possibility? Some people are speculating that Venom might be in this film. I mean, I would love to see Venom, but it's a very it's a very difficult thing to squeeze in when you've already got enough as it is. And you've already got Venom 2 coming out as well. Yeah, but considering how important Venom is to the whole Spider-Man like character and the whole concept of Venom, it is 
just oh god because the thing is there is more to venom than just being part of spider-man i've explained to jack that he is part of something even greater which i i don't know if they'll ever fully explore but it's one of these things where it's so much complicity uh, i can't even say it complicity uh, <laughs> complexness i'm going to say that word instead complexness to it all that i just don't think it could justify it within the space of a three-hour movie if we're gonna well if the movie's going to be like three hours long it means it's going to be an hour per like part of the story to explain what's going on and then each hour is going to be split into half hour segments to move things along that means that venom if at all is going to have half an hour at the most like, I just think this film is already busy enough as it is. It's already very busy. So I just... The only way I can even justify any of that happening is if there's a second film, which I highly doubt, because I reckon this is going to be the one sort of close up Toby's arc. Not sure where Andrew will go from here. I have no idea. But, um, you know, I am very much looking forward to this film. I had a mini freak out when I watched the trailer, and I was so excited, and I immediately messaged Ben and said, as soon as it's out, cinema, yeah. we're going to go watch it. Most oh, definitely. yes. So I will be very much looking forward to that with bated breath. And it's just the... I never thought we were going to see Tobey Maguire in my lifetime dress up as Spider-Man again, but it, it's happening. It is happening. And unlike Andrew, because usually Andrew's the one to... Uh, he's not done a very good job of dodging, you know, the speculation. Like, Tom Holland is notorious for letting slip details about his films that he's in uh, and obviously you got toby Maguire, who hasn't really been seen he's been very 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 quiet well i have a feeling that the reason why he's been so quiet is he may not have much of a role within the movie itself i mean the well, thing because uh... there well you say that because maybe the Tobey Maguire, which we see, is probably not the same one we saw in Spider-Man 3. What if he's, like, a bit more of an aged Spidey? That would be a really good thing. But then it's one of these things, whether he's carried on being Spidey or whether he's had to retire because something traumatic happened and they have to bring him from the brink of, basically, depression or whatever to fight against what they need, and then he has his bittersweet ending. Yeah, because what if, like, in his reality, he might have lost his MJ, or he might have lost Aunt May. You know, anything could have happened. Mm -hmm. But it begs the question as to... If they are... Obviously, they're going to all meet. What is the whole point of all of them working together? Because, I mean... The Sinister Six, Spider-Man's been able to defeat on his own anyway, so there has to be more of a reason for all three of them meeting, other than just being, oh yeah, we just got like six bad guys we can barely hold off against our own. Shall we all go together? Yeah, it's just, um, obviously, it's really cool plot, looking forward to it, but then it's still, there's that, the nitpicky part of me that's going, yeah, great film, but why? <laughs> Well, this is where I say that there is a lot more cosmic stuff coming to the MCU, which I cannot wait for, but it's going to be a very confusing mess, if not done right. Well, you talk about doing it right. This is sort of related, but sort of not. That some people are speculating that Venom will be in this film. I don't think Venom's going to be in the film at all because I can't really see the point in fitting him in, especially since we got Venom 2 out. There may be like maybe an easter egg something like that or maybe a post credit scene whatever fine that's cool but there was um i'm not sure if it is the original story or if it's just one of the stories but in the comics i think it was even before peter parker the venom symbiote found deadpool but i'm not sure if that's what happened originally or if it's just like an alternate story i think it's more of an alternate story i mean thing is marvel keep changing so much about the whole symbiote yeah continuity like symbiote what's canon and what's not this is why i mentioned earlier about the fact that to explain venom there is so much more than just it being a parasite like it's got to the point now where it's 
no longer just a parasite. It is like an extension of pure evil that this god of pure evil, before the universe began, created a whole load of them and they revolted against him and it spirals from there onwards. But the biggest part of it all is that it leads into Gore, the god butcher, who is going to be the main baddie of Lord, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. Whether or not they're going to use the whole point of symbiotes, I do not know, but it would make sense to have some link to a degree. Yeah, for sure. But I just... I have no idea how this movie's going to go. I just got a feeling that either... All of this stuff that happens to Tom Holland's Spidey is more of a way of learning his lesson about consequences, or whether it's going to be one of the Spidey does like a forgiveness thing towards the end to basically pretend to be that Tom Holland's Spider-Man so he doesn't get into trouble and everything's rainbow and sunshines by the end of the movie. Yeah. I mean, it's just I don't know if maybe they're just gonna send like the baddies back to like the point of when they died or when they were redeemed or whatever or if they're gonna kill them off somehow or maybe send them off into another reality another timeline entirely so they're not bothering the rest of them i don't know but it just does make me think because obviously because we don't know anything in the plot we don't know how we can't even speculate on the ending or what's going to happen because there's nothing really to go on and trailers are meant to be deceiving sometimes. Yes, but I think we can conclude with today's chat that this definitely is going to be a movie that's going to change a hell of a lot for the MCU in the long run. And like, because this is like our childhoods, I'll probably be bringing some tissues to the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much. But is there anything else you want to add to this today, dude? I don't think so, but um anyway i am so looking forward to this we got so much more to talk about as time goes on and obviously if there's any new tv spots for spider-man no way home for the trailer if we have any more second trailers or third trailer tv spots whatever if there's a bit more context then we'll be sure to cover that at some point but until then it's going to be ben stopping next time which is what i I came across this idea today because I haven't watched the movies for such a long time and I wanted to try and go over it as an adult. The live action versions of Scooby-Doo. Oh, okay. I'll enjoy this one. Yeah, because there's... i tell you what, random tidbit. So I believe it's in the first one. The main baddie is Scrappy-Doo. Do you want to know why it was Scrappy-Doo instead of the Lunar Ghost, which it was supposed to be originally? Because Tim Curry hated Scrappy Doo. That was it. That that was the whole reason behind it. So they made Scrappy Doo the main bad guy in the first movie. Is that the only reason? Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I know. But it's Tim Curry. I mean, the guy looks like he's on acid half the time anyway. That's such a drama queen. Well, yeah, I mean, he was in the Rocky Horror Show, so it does explain all. Yeah. But there we go. <laughs> That's the end of today's episode. Again, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Laters. Uh -huh.